Bibles, please, if you turn with us in God's Word to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. While you're turning there, I'll read a verse from Matthew chapter 13. If you want to jot down that reference, Matthew 13, 44, the Bible says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Could you imagine, here's a guy that he does not own a field, but he finds a treasure on that field. Maybe he's, maybe he's working the field or something, and, and uh, that treasure was of great value. And so he goes home, and he, he gets everything that he can together, and he, and he goes and he makes a bid because whatever's on that field, if he buys that field, now he owns that. And so if it costs him a few thousands of dollars in our day and time to buy that field, to get something worth $100,000, what a great investment because there's treasure. There's treasure in that land. I'd like you to look at one verse of Scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. The Bible says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Anything that God puts in, into someone is powerful and valuable. A treasure. We have a treasure in earthen vessels. This is not something that is a, uh, a potter, you know, the potter can make. It's something that God, the master potter, the creator, has made. And he wants to put within us his treasure. The Bible says that if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. But he put light within us. When we got saved, when we were redeemed and born again as a child of God then the glory of Jesus Christ came within us, and he put a treasure within us. And this treasure we have in earthen vessel. Here's the title of the message. Cherish the treasure. What God has put in you, what God has given to you, the gifts that God's given to you, and we'll look at three of them here this morning. We're going to see that we're to cherish those you love and cherish time that you have and cherish the living Lord. Cherish the treasure. Let's bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, I ask you now that you would meet with us. Lord, I humble my heart, confessing my need of you and my failures to you, Lord. Take these corrupt lips of clay. And Lord, I pray that you would sanctify. Lord, I pray that you would bless and empower your precious holy word. Not my words, but your words. And Lord, I pray that that we would go out these doors different, changed. Lord, I pray that just as these graduates, Lord, they're receiving a piece of paper in a few days. Some have already received it, stating that they have invested time and effort and they have crossed a new goal in their life. Lord, I pray that they would look back at the treasure that you have put into their hearts and lives. And Lord, help them to invest it for thee. Moms and dads, I pray that you, would, that you would speak to each and every one of their hearts. The responsibility of raising boys and girls for you. May they cherish the treasure that you've placed into their lives and their hands. Lord, I pray that each and every soul would say, yes, God, thank you for the gifts the treasure that you've given to us. Help me to cherish it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Something that we cherish, we value highly. We take good care of. We protect. Fragile. Handle with care. We guard it. We don't want someone to steal it. Cherishing something. We put it in a place of honor. We brag about it. We're so thankful for God's goodness to us. Something that we cherish. I'd like you to think about this, this treasure that God has placed in earthen vessels, placed in our heart. And the, the first thought I'd like you to jot down is to cherish those you love. Cherish those you love. Spend the time 
investing your heart, investing your life into those that you love. Look into the eyes of your loved one. If you have children, then thank God for them. Uh, I know it, it can be kind of distressing at times. I know that children will push you to your limit. After all, don't we push God and don't we disappoint God and don't we displease our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ? After all, he's done for us and given us nothing but love, and yet we're a discouragement many times. You know, it's the nature of, of human beings. We have an old nature. And uh, if, if, you're, if you're upset with, with your child because uh, they won't obey, well, they got it naturally. They got it from you, didn't they? Okay, so just take that to heart. Cherish the treasure. Cherish the treasure of those that you love. The Bible t tells us in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16, that there was a young lady that was not loved. You would, you would probably say, you know, I would, I would like to cherish those that, that, that I could love and, and those that, that perhaps love me. But this young girl named Ruth, she fell in love and married one of these Hebrew young men. And he died, and he left no heir. They had no baby to cherish. She was all alone. And Ruth, she decided she was going to follow Naomi. And Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16, a very famous verse from the Word of God. You'll probably recognize it. The Bible says, Ruth said unto Naomi, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither, whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. She said, what, whatever you do, I'm with you. Naomi was the only person that she had, and she was going to cherish the one that she loved. Now, her sister-in-law, she turned away, and she went back home, went back to Moab. But Ruth, she wanted to follow Jehovah God. She saw something very real in Naomi. Even though Naomi was discouraged, even though Naomi was, was uh, distressed and, and even bitter against God. Because she lost both of her sons and her husband. May I tell you today, you might be upset with God about something that happened in your life. You might be upset with God. Why, God? I don't understand. After all, I, I'm not perfect, but I really wanted to serve you, and I look at so many people that hate you, and their life seems to be going just fine. Why, God, would you do this? God's not promised to answer all those questions. I think when we get to heaven, a lot of those questions will be handled. A lot of those, hand, a lot of those questions will be something we won't even bring up to the Lord because it'll be healed. But down here we have hurt. If you have someone that you love, cherish them. If you have no one to love, then find someone to love. Find someone to love. There are hurting people everywhere. Maybe your children are in glory ahead of you. Parents should not have to bury their children, but it happens. Husbands should not have to bury their wife. Wives should not have to bury their husband, but it happens. It happens. Some have had a spouse turn and leave you. That should not happen, but it does. Maybe you don't have anyone to love. Find someone. Find someone to love. Jot down this, this reference, 1 Samuel 18 and verse 1. And it came to pass when he, speaking of David, had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Best friends. Best friends. And even though society was trying to pit them against one another... They had a, a, a similar goal in each. David and Jonathan wanted God's will in their life. If you can find someone that wants to serve God, that wants to glorify the Lord, find a way to show them love. After all, love is not a feeling. Please get that out of your mind. The world tries to tell us that feelings, nothing more than feelings. Feeling is the most important thing. Guess what? 
after the wedding ceremony, a lot of the feeling sometimes is gone. That's why the commitment kicks in. The commitment of marriage is so vitally important. The, the commitment of, of, of the oneness before Almighty God, you and me forever. I'm speaking, I'm looking at hope. Um, <laughs> now listen, folks. Feelings go up and down. Feelings, you know, uh, kind of rise with Pepsi and go down with, you know, whatever, you know. Uh, feelings are, uh, change all the time. Feelings are fickle. And we don't follow our feelings. You know why you love, you know how you, how you love somebody? You give to that person. You give them your time. You give them your talent. You give them your treasure. You give anything that you have, and you give that to that person. How do I know that? Because God defined love in the, probably the most famous verse in all the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave. Definition of love is giving. That's the definition of love. Well, if he just loved me, I'd give to him. If she just showed me that, that love, gave me, you know, no, 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 no. God gave to us. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us. He showed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There's some times that your mate is not going to be able to show you the love that you need. And you continue to show your love. You give to someone that you love. Ladies, some of you are alone. And you happen to have a killer recipe. I mean, one of those was passed down from your mom and from her mom. And, and before they even wrote down recipes, it was some, somebody taught you how to make that casserole. Or somebody taught you how to make that pie and that crust. And somebody taught you how to do something uh, marvelous and wonderful. You just say, Lord, who could I give to? And maybe that pie is not very expensive. But you show up and you bring that pie to somebody at church. You give that pie to somebody that, that is a neighbor, somebody that's hurting, somebody that's a friend that you just want to reach out and love to, and you give, you'll be surprised when you give love to someone, when you spend time with someone who is hurting, when you do something for someone that cannot be measured in dollars and cents. You cherish the ones that you love. You'll be surprised how much love comes back to you. That's not why you do it. That's not why you do it. But you'd be surprised how much love comes back to you. Cherish those you love. Look into the eyes of those you love. Look into their eyes. Don't just, you know, just see them in, the, in, in, in everything that's, that's going on around and concerned and with, with, with everything else in the world. Spend time looking in their eyes. You'll be surprised what you'll see behind their eyeballs. If you just spend time with them. Dads, spend time with your children. Spend time with them. Love them. Cherish those you love. Next, cherish time and live. <laughs> cherish time and live. Don't, don't die before it's time, folks. Don't do that. But ever remember that our time is running out. Cherish time and live. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Those moments are gone. You're not going to get them back. Well, preacher, hurry up and finish so I can go out and live. <laughs> Amen. I'll work at it. I'll, 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 I'll get there, okay? I promise. Cherish time and live. Live in the moment. Hey, you know what? Some people live in the past. Now, we need to learn from the past, absolutely. And it's okay to look at the past. But don't live there. Don't live there. Thank God for the things in the past. Some of you will thank God that they are past. Whew, boy, I'm glad you don't have to redo that. Learn from it. 
Thank God for it, but live in the present. A lot of people live in the future. Oh, when I was, when I was in junior church, my goal was to be a teenager. That was my goal. I thought teenagers, you know, there's a teenager right over here. Stand up, stand up, stand up. This guy would, would have been my hero. He would have been my hero. One day, I'm going to be a teenager just like him. Thank you. I turned 13 years old, became a teenager, and it wasn't all as, you know, cracked up to be. I thought, that's because I'm not driving yet. So my goal is to be driving 16. I want to be 16. And then I got my driver's license. By the way, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, we have some really wild drivers. I found out why. I, for my driver's test, I got in, I get in under the wheel, and there's this building right there, and it's sitting on the road and parking lot on, on three sides. And uh, I, I got, got in the car, and, and the officer got in the passenger seat and didn't know what was going to happen or anything like that. My mother took me to the, to the driver's, uh, uh, to the highway patrol thing. And so I got in there and started up the car, uh, checked the rearview mirror, and, you know, after the seatbelt and all that, and, and uh, backed out. And she said, go up here and, and turn right. So I, I, I thought, okay, I need to make sure and turn my signal, you know, and uh, look both ways, turn right, and go around. She said, now turn right into the parking lot. And I turned right into the parking lot, signal, you know, and, and make another right. Make another right. Okay, park the car. That was my test. I drove around the building one time. I told my mother, I understand why we have crazy drivers in Chattanooga. I got my little license, had my picture on it, and for a few moments I was like, wow, this is so exciting, you know. After about two weeks of driving, what's the big deal? Oh, now I, I just can't wait to be 18 and graduate from high school. And, and person, we, 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 we live our lives chasing the next carrot that's dangling in front of us. Instead of living in the moment that God has given to us. Live in the present. The present is a gift from God. Yesterday is a canceled check. Tomorrow is a promissory note. The only thing you can spend is now, today. So what are you going to do with that today? Solomon, he had some words of wisdom. He said in Ecclesiastes 12, 1, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Now I pointed something out about youth in, in the early service. I, I told how I heard Pastor Jim say the other day, he was talking with someone, and uh, this person was my senior, and uh, he was talking with him, and he, and, he, and he called him young. He called him young. And uh, they said, I'm not young. He said, look, I'm 80 years old. You're young. <laughs> and I'm a youngin', right? I'm a youngin'. Who in here is older than Pastor Jim? You're older than 80. You're older than 80. Look at there. Look at there. They're calling you young. They're calling you young. You know that you're younger today than you're going to be tomorrow? You know that? So remember now, thy creator, in the days of thy youth. So that's 96 or 16. In the days of your youth. There'll come a day that your body is actually going to be right. Now, this morning, some of you would say, my body said, you can't get out of bed. No, no, no. You just need to stay right where you're at. And, and you know, your, your, your knees are going to hurt, and your back is going to ache, and you're going to have this, going to have that, and all that kind of thing. You just need to stay in bed. There will come a day when that will be true. There will come a day that your legs won't work, that someone will have to get you into a wheelchair. But today... Your legs work even in the midst of the pain and the agony and the, all, all the pseudof, or, you know, Advil and all the stuff that you, that you have to take to survive. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, and you say, I have no pleasure in them. Cherish those you love. Cherish time you have. 
and cherish the living Lord. Cherish the living Lord. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. In our earthen vessels. He's given us people to love. He's given us time. And he's given us someone that we can worship and someone we can cherish and someone we can dote on and someone we can, we can thank. The Bible tells us in James 4 and verse 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You know the problem with some people wanting to, to uh, draw near to God, to cherish God, is that Satan's going to whisper in their ear and say, you know what you did on yesterday? You know what you said last night? You know last week how, how you failed the Lord? God's not going to use you. God's not pleased with you. God's not happy with your life. You just need to just, just step back and he's... God says, if you'll draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. You take one step towards God, he takes three towards you. It's that kind of a thing. Now, I'm not preaching some uh, health and wealth and Cadillac gospel. I, I want you to understand something. God has holy standards because the Bible goes on to say in the same, same verse, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and plur purify your hearts, ye devil-minded. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Hey, listen, we've heard a lot about cleansing our hands, haven't we? We've heard a lot about that. Uh, it, it, was, it was long before any health official at the White House pulpit uh, ever talked about uh, washing hands. I remember my mother uh, many, many times. Uh, we'd be ready to sit down and eat. She'd say, did you wash your hands? Go wash your hands. I washed my hands. She'd say, with soap. I go back and wash my hands. I come back, wash my hands. She'd say, do you use cold water or hot water? She'd grab my hands. They're cold. Go wash them with hot water. <laughs> Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Don't we live our life so much that way? I want to do it my thing. Oh, no, I need to do it God's way. I, I'm do, no, I really want to do it. No, I think I'll do it God's way. No, no wonder Christians are so confused and dizzy in our life. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Cleanse our hands, purify our hearts. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm so thankful that he gives us a way back. Cherish the living Lord. He is our soon coming king. He's going to take us out of this world. By the way, folks, uh, there are people today who are going to give you all kinds of arguments and all kinds of things trying to, trying to say things that I don't believe are taught in the word of God um, and uh, about the rapture and all that kind of thing. And, and uh, I'm not the one making the rapture happen. Jesus is the one making the rapture happen. And so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not authority. He is the authority. And so I just stand on what the Bible says. As far as I can understand Scripture, we're getting out of here before the Antichrist takes over. The tribulation period is going to be the most awful time. It's going to start out being a peaceful time. It's going to start out being that everything's fine, everything's dandy, and, and, and everything's wonderful. And that's the way the tribulation is going to start out. But it's not going to keep going that way. People ask about this uh, uh, digital tattoo and all is that the mark of the beast and all that kind of thing. It can only be the mark of the beast. It can only be the Antichrist's image if the Antichrist is in charge. I'll tell you something. I think it'll be uh, a, 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 mm, it, 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 mm. <laughs> People say, well, what if? I, don't you love it when people give you the, the what if questions? Well, what if it's not the Antichrist, but what if they, what if they do, you know, uh, have people, you know, take the, 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 that digital tattoo, that invisible thing, and, and uh, proving that you've, that you've had uh, this treatment and vaccinations and all that kind of thing. And, and what, what if they do all this, all, all that kind of thing? Well, first of all, God's in charge, okay? God's in charge. Secondly, I, I don't believe for testimony's sake that I'd be wanting to take that step and to do that and receive that thing. For testimony's sake, even though the Antichrist is not in charge, I, I just don't believe for testimony's sake that I would do that. Not because I, because I know that my, my faith and trust in Jesus Christ for my salvation, but I want to cherish 
the living Lord. I'm going to stand before him one day. And I want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Cherish the living Lord. How do you do that? When's the last time that you opened the word of God and you didn't have to? When's the last time that you prayed and food was not in front of you? When's the last time you worshiped the Lord and, and praised and, 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 and sang to him and it wasn't in church? You know, we can do that. We need to do that. We need to cherish our living Lord. He's very real. And if he's not real to you, then there's a problem right there. That problem can be fixed. Get alone with him. Before you start reading the word of God, first pray. And say, now, Lord, I want to hear your voice speak to my heart through your word. So I know, I know in order for that to happen, I need to make sure that I'm in tune with you. I need to make sure that there's no unconfessed sin between you and me. So, Lord, I ask you now to show me if there's something wrong between you and me. And I want to confess that. Please forgive me. And we need to make some things right with God. Might need, might need to make some things right with someone else. When all that's done, come back. Say, now, Lord, now I want to hear your voice. And I want to read from your word. And I want you to speak to me. And just start reading. And I encourage you to read out loud. I encourage you to be alone where you can read out loud. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. You know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just hearing the Holy Spirit within my heart talking about the ministry. What a joy it is to teach a Sunday school class. What a joy it is to welcome people at the door. What a joy it is to hand out a gospel tract like the, these that we have. It says, seeking a cure. What a joy it is to, to, to just hand, hand them something that talks about uh, hours before the world rolled into the new decade of 2020, a group of Chinese doctors and talks about that and, and talks about the greatest, the greatest problem, the greatest epidemic that, that mankind has is sin and how Jesus Christ is the one that can forgive and cleanse us from sin. What a marvelous opportunity to hand someone a gospel tract. It's a ministry. It's a ministry. And the Bible says we faint not. In other words, you don't quit. You don't give up. You don't throw in the towel. Cherish the living Lord. So I challenge you today with this verse of Deuteronomy 8, verse 11. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Today, are you cherishing your living Lord? Are you cherishing those you love? Are you cherishing the time that you have? That will change your life. It will change your outlook. It will change your attitude. It will put you just eyeball to eyeball in attitude with the Lord Jesus Christ. Show your love. Cherish the treasure. Let's bow together in prayer.